to have a lot of like abundant and big groupers that we found out in Hong Kong in the past but because we used it to be a fishing village and then now we understand one of the things we are facing is overfishing so that's why if we want to actually to understand and protect the area Go back um, and interview people who were diving here in the 60s and 70s. I mean, they were big fish all the time, and we used to have a lot of sharks in Hong Kong, a lot of reef sharks. Um, they've almost been entirely been wiped out. They're almost all gone um, because of overfishing. So I think that more than anything else um, in Hong Kong, we need more protected areas with, with just no fishing. to the ocean reconnects me with nature because it's not something that you can get from a book like when you're reading from a book you don't de develop that kind of emotional attachment to the nature Um, there are a lot of really good photographers in this group now um, and are getting some you know really fantastic pictures um, and I think from a science perspective there are hundreds of these surveys that have been now been done all right and you really get that value with having so many different sites um, having been visited so many different times over the years you're really building up a, a more and more solid um, database um, of these sort of weird wonderful tropical fish in Hong Kong <coughs> Being part of the volunteer and as my job as a secondary school teacher, one of the things that I try to promote at my school is to let the students understand why I'm so enthusiastic about diving in Hong Kong. The number one thing that comes to my mind is that uh, this is the place they live as they grow up and if they are not understanding the reason why they need to protect it, then they will not be motivated to keep it clean and, and safe for themselves. <laughs> Yeah, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see.